Hey everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Storytime. Today I have with me a baby Chinese water dragon. Uh, this little guy has been super rambunctious this morning and it's been absolutely adorable, uh, showing all the awesome little traits that I love about water dragons. He's been climbing all over everything, he's been taking big leaps, he's been swimming around, he even ate some guppies earlier. Now, Chinese water dragons can be pretty cool pets. Uh, sometimes when they're this size, when they're babies, uh, they can look a lot like an iguana, but there are a lot of very, very big key differences between them. Uh, one of them is size. Iguanas can get very large with their tail. Um, both of them have extremely long tails that make up the majority of their body length, usually about two thirds. An iguana can top out somewhere around five or even six feet, but a Chinese water dragon, on the other hand, usually tops out around three feet. So this guy is going to get much bigger, but as you can see, it's almost all tail. This tail helps them out with a lot of really cool things. First of all, it helps them with swimming. Uh, the fact that they're called water dragon is not ironic. These guys do spend a lot of time in water. Uh, in fact, they can submerge themselves for up to 25 minutes before needing to come back up for air. And they'll sometimes even sleep in the water with just their nostrils up above the water in order to help keep themselves protected. This long tail basically acts like a motor when they're underwater. They'll tuck in their legs nice and tight and they'll flip their tail really hard and they'll just like shoot right through the water, uh, pretty much like a torpedo. Uh, these guys are built for speed and for mobility. Um, so not only are they great in the water, they'll shoot up out of the water and literally propel themselves into the air and they can take off running very fast and they're also great climbers. You can see by these really nice long toes here, these are great for gripping trees. What it does is it gives them uh, more square footage essentially when they leap onto something to spread out their toes and to be able to grab onto something and then climb up. Uh, they are known for sometimes hanging out above branches that are over top of the water and they'll sit on those branches and they'll look down and wait for fish to come by and they'll literally dive bomb down and catch the fish. Uh, that streamlined body and that nice like torpedo shaped head makes it really easy for these guys to dive in and catch their fish. Now, as these guys get older, you're gonna see a lot of what we call sexual dimorphism, which is how we tell the difference between a male and female without lifting their skirt. Uh, with males, they're gonna get spikier, they're gonna have kind of a ridge here, you're gonna see some big jowls, they're typically like red and orange, uh, whereas females, all those traits are, are a little bit more submissive, you don't see them nearly as much. Um, this one is a little bit young to tell, um, but you know, sometimes we can also look at what we call femoral pores, which are these uh, lines of uh, scales that go across the cloaca. Now, being that this one's a juvenile, it's still really hard to tell. Um, but I am starting to see the femoral pores pop up a little bit, and I'm starting to see like a little bit of an arch there. This might end up being a male, but really we won't be able to tell for about another year or so. Now, Chinese water dragons do live for a long time. Uh, you can end up uh, having a water dragon live upwards of 20 years. Um, and during that time frame, you need to have a very large enclosure for them. Being that they can get three feet long with their tail and that they do like to climb and swim and jump and run, you need to give them a very, very large space. Um, at the size he's at right now, he could be comfortable in like a 90 to 120 gallon tank or 180 to 220 uh, for maybe another year or two years. But after that, it's actually a pretty good idea to try to invest into just making him his own room. So what I like to suggest people is if you have an extra closet space, especially if you have a walk-in closet, tear up the carpet, lay down linoleum or tile, and then put FRP board all up the sides and silicone it all in. And then you have yourself a waterproof walk-in enclosure. Even better is if you can go ahead and put in a, like a small kiddie pool or like a big like 20 gallon tub with a drain to give them plenty of room to swim around in. But when it comes to having large reptiles, um, and large snakes and things like that, really if you've got the space, you should be giving them a room, essentially, because a lot of times they don't end up making tanks big enough for something like this. Now, uh, one of the reasons I brought him out um, was yesterday I was doing a birthday party tour here, which if you didn't know, we do birthday party tours and I head up our education stuff. And I had a really, really funny little girl who saw the Chinese water dragon and literally screamed, I'm from China, I love the dragon. And I was like, cool, I should probably use our Chinese water dragon. And then when I stopped by the library, it just so happens the librarian was putting away a book called How to Catch a Dragon. So um, 
I found the whole thing to be pretty serendipitous that I had somebody yesterday who was really excited to learn about dragons and then I go to the library and the librarian is literally putting away a book about dragons. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our story started. What I'm gonna do is leave him here because he does like to perch. And so when I keep him on my thumb, that hopefully keeps him in one spot. When I put him on my shirt, he sometimes takes off running or jumping. So we are gonna read How to Catch a Dragon um, by Ann, Adam Wallace and Andy Elkerton. Um, this one says it's a New York Times bestselling author and illustrator, so getting fancy today. How to Catch a Dragon. Mom's cooking in the kitchen and Grandma's standing near. We're getting ready for New Year's Eve, my favorite day all year. I think we might be missing something, I hear my mother say. A dragon would bring health and fortune. A dragon, what? No way. Every year, my friends and I help decorate the street. We hang Fei Shang and red lanterns every couple feet. But this new year, we're on the watch to pick up any trail. Oh wait, is that? I thought I saw. It is a real red dragon's tail. And sorry if I get any pronunciations wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments. This dragon can control the water. He's cooler than we thought. We'll have to be much smarter to get this dragon caught. We won't use tacos for this dragon. We'll try noodles and sticky rice. The problem is he loved them so he came back to eat them twice. I thought that since our dragon ate, he'd be ready for a nap. But even Cozy Dragon Inn couldn't cut it as a trap. We hope to catch our dragon now with this thundering beat. We might as well have caught the wind, but we won't admit defeat. We cannot lose this dragon now, not with this massive bait. A dragon can't resist some gold, we'll catch him, just you wait. On any other day, I'd love to catch money from the sky, but today it means our trap fell through. I just need one more try. This final trap just has to work. It is our greatest chance. The thing that dragons love the most, the mighty dragon dance. Our dragon dance is going great. I'm having so much fun, but where's our dragon? We've got to catch him before this day is done. Oh man, we made a giant mess and no dragon to be seen. That means no good health or fortune. I guess we'd better clean. I'm sorry, Mom. I tried my best to make you proud this year. Then she pulls me in a hug. I love this dragon best right here. Watching fireworks with Mom and Grandma next to me, I feel so lucky standing here with my loving family. Better luck next year. The end. Now, in the back of the book, what's really awesome is it also gives us translations into Chinese. So, this is a very, very cool book on how to catch a dragon. Um, previous stories that I've read uh, in other years talk about the myths surrounding uh, Chinese water dragons and how they're such a big part of Chinese culture. And if you guys know me at all, you know I love learning about other cultures. So, if you have anything to add, please feel free to comment or send me a message about it because if you've got other books to recommend that might talk about Chinese culture and dragon culture, uh, I would love to read them because I love dragons, even if they're just our little water dragons here. So 
I hope you guys had fun learning about our Chinese water dragon and reading our book, How to Catch a Dragon. We'll see you next week.